Okay, moments of truth. Number four. Can anybody tell me what a moment of truth is? So a moment of truth is, to be more precise, it's a point of contact, any point of contact with a, with a customer, where it can either, obviously, any point of contact can either be a favourable outcome or a negative outcome. What do we want it to be? A favourable, which is what Ellie was on about. So this is an absolutely stunning concept that I'm going to take you through here. I really wish I'd invented this, but it, I, I didn't. Take credit for that. Moments of Truth um, is a concept that's been around a long time. Um, and this guy called Jan Carlson created it. And he wrote a book called Moments of Truth in 1985, I think it was. Jan Carlson was known as an aviation expert. And he was renowned for helping avi aviation companies, not just airlines, but avi aviation companies, to get him out of trouble. He was a troubleshooter. And in the early 80s, SAS Airlines, you know, Scandinavian Airlines, were in deep trouble. And for, fortuitously for them, they, they decided to bring him on board as the, as the chairman, basically. They brought him in right at the top to sort the business out because it was losing customers hand over fist, literally every day, losing thousands of customers. So what he did to begin with, he, he told the board not to, not to tell everybody that he was appointed. And he did the mystery shopper. So bear in mind, back in the early 80s, 80, 81, we didn't have the internet or anything like that. So he literally looked at all the customer-facing elements of the business. So the first thing he did was he, he ordered tickets. But back then, it, you couldn't order them online. So he picked up the phone, rang the order line, the ticket line, and spoke to the staff to order tickets. And he noticed that they were terrible. You know, the phone would ring for a minute and then, it, until, and, and then it wasn't picked up. The people on the end of the phone didn't care less. They were sloppy. They didn't speak very nicely. They weren't polite. And he's like, Jesus Christ, this isn't very good. So then, then he goes to the airport. So, so obviously the next thing is was, was check-in, wasn't it? So he's, he was looking at how, how that was handled. And again, people, staff were rude. And he'd look at the staff, at people who were just chucking the, the suitcases in the air and they were blanding, do you know what I mean? Like complete disdain for, for their properties. And then he looked at what it was like in, on the airplane. So how were they greeted by the air stewards and air stewardesses? And again, they were pretty rude and not very polite. And then, you know, what did the captain say on, on, you know, on the intercom? Again, it was just terrible. So he knew straight away what the problem was. The problem was they treated customers like dirt, which is why they were losing customers hand over fist. So anyway, so he brought everybody together, sorry, all the heads of department together in a room like this, probably a bigger room than this. And he said, right, okay, he explained what I've just explained. He said, right, we're going to put a stop to this right now. He's a, and he, he gave them all a big sheet of paper. He gave every single head of department a big sheet of paper. And he said, right, what I want you to do in your own departments, I want you to write down in chronological order every single point of contact, every moment of truth that we have with our customers. Okay? So the analogy, not the analogy, but how this looks on paper, a moment of truth. If you imagine that's, that's the, um, uh, the experience or the... Um, uh, yeah, the experience. And this is the moment of truth. Okay. So we want it to be a positive experience, don't we? So we, we, we want that to happen. We don't want that to happen. And we've got that. Now, right at this point here, that's what we call a wow. Okay. But anything above that line is good. Yes? This here, at this point, that's, that's called a lost customer because the experience is so bad. But anything below there is obviously negative. So what he was saying to the, the team at SAS was, look, our moments of truth, our points of contact with our customers are here, and a lot of them are here because they're so bad. We've got, to, we've got to address that, and we've got to get everybody above the line now. So, they went away, 
They, they brought in all the points of contact they have with the customers in chronological order, and they came back. And he went, brilliant. Right, now I want you to do is I want you to go back to your team, and I want you to isolate every single point of contact and make them a positive experience. And the more you can get them closer to wow, the better. Now just think about that. We've spoken over the last couple of days and mentioned briefly about marginal gains and stuff. In a way, this is, this is the epitome of that. Because if you think about it, when it comes to customer service, I don't know about you guys, but early on in when I started out on this journey, one of the things I knew that was going to be important was customer service. So I invested time in books and, and um, courses and stuff, but the, the solutions were typically pretty hard, expensive, involved massive change in an organization. Nobody <coughs> likes that. So th there wasn't really, a, for me, a viable solution for customer service, for outstanding customer service. And I came across Moments of Truth and read it and just thought, oh my God, this is just so brilliant. Because if you think about it, if you isolate every single point of contact with a customer and treat it in its, on its own merit, and you make sure that that point of contact is an amazing experience for that customer, and you replicate, well, you do that across every single point of contact, what happens to your customer service? It's exceptional. It's, it's exceptional. And guess what? It doesn't cost a lot of money. It doesn't involve, involve massive change. It's not complicated. Better still, who are the best people to put these moments of truth in place? The staff. So they buy into this, honestly. It, it, it's an amazing thing, this. And it's so simple. And it's been around since 1985. And when you ask people, have you heard of Moments of Truth? Nobody's ever heard of it. It's phenomenal. So guess what happened? So, so they, they came back, they did that and said, right, okay, what I want you to do now is, is create a mini system around each one of those so, so it's predictable in terms of the results that we get for, for customers. So they implemented it. And in six short months, it transformed the airline. Six months it took, which isn't a long time, is it? Complicated? No. Costly? No. Involves massive change? No. Involved the staff? Yes. Staff happy, airline happy, customers happy. It's a happy day, isn't it? And it's so easy for every business on the planet to copy that approach. But think about it. How many of these have we had? We're all consumers. We're business consumers and we're consumer consumers, if you know what I mean. So we buy from businesses and we, and, and, uh, as, as a business owner and we, we buy from businesses as a consumer. How, I bet you can count on less than one hand how many wows you've had. So this is a good story. So there's a book that's on your recommended, recommended reading list called um, <coughs> How to Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive. It's a book by Harvey McKay. It's a brilliant book. He is in prison at the moment for embezzlement, but, <laughs> but the book is great. And um, there's a passage... Pardon? Role model. Yeah, well, he's, he's not, obviously. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's a passage in the book. It's, he doesn't talk about moments of truth, but there's a passage in the book where he talks about his experience with this taxi driver, cab driver, as they call him in the States. And he just arrived from flying in from somewhere else into New York. And one of the... Uh, airports in New York, and he came out to the taxi rank. And as as he as he was walking up to the taxi rank, he saw this this taxi kind of coming round. And the first thing he noticed was it was like absolutely immaculate. It, there wasn't a speck of dirt on it, which surprised him because most cabs and taxis are filthy, aren't they? Anyway, so so the guy pulls up, gets out, opens the door for Harvey to get in. So anyway, so as he's getting in, Harvey turns around and hands him a card. And on the top of the card, it says, Wally's mission statement. So a cab driver with mission statement. And it said, to get my customer to their intended destination in the quickest and safest time possible. So like Harvey saw that and think, oh, that's, a, that's a taxi driver, a cab driver's got a mission statement. And it's brilliant. He then turned around to him and said, hi, um, my name's Wally. Um, 
on our drive to your destination, um, I can be quiet or I can, I can tell you the sights as we go past them. It's up to you. Went, Great, I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do the sights. And then he handed him another card. And this other card said, these are the radio stations we've got and these are the newspapers I've got. And he had all the radio stations there and he had, he had all the different um, new, newspapers. So I was like, yeah, I'll have the Wall Street Journal or, or whatever. And they said, would you like a drink? And jokingly said, I'll have a Diet Coke. And he reached down into, into the front compartment, got him a chilled Diet Coke and handed him the Diet Coke. And he was just like flabbergasted. He also noticed that the inside of the cab was as spotlessly clean as it was on the outside, which is really unusual. And he said to, he said to Wally, he said, this is amazing. You're a cab driver. Have you always done this? And he said, no. Six months ago, I was like everybody else. I was miserable. I was doing what everyone else was doing. My cab was filthy, turned up late, and I thought, there's got to be a better way. So I completely changed how I, how I viewed this. But I added stuff. Some stuff worked, some stuff didn't, and I keep adding to it. He said, and I love it now. He said, you were lucky to get me um, today because I'm just actually filling in for a friend, but normally I don't. I don't you've got to book me. So Harvey said, well, has it made any difference? He said, well, actually, yeah. He said, in the first six months, I've doubled my profits. I expect to quadruple my profits next year. Now, even though Wally probably didn't realize it, and neither did Harvey, what, what Wally was doing was practicing moments of truth. He was, at every point of contact with that customer, he was raising the bar. He was, he was, he was above this level. And the customer's thinking, wow, wow, wow. Now, you can't build wows into every point of contact, can you? But as long as you're above the line, you're doing a good job. But you can create wows that are unexpected, like the shock and awe packages that we're, that we're talking about. They're unexpected. They're not part of the normal cycle of engaging with a customer. But we engineer them to create special wow moments. Make sense? This is a good one. This is going back a few years, mine, but it's, it's one of the only ones I can think of. So I was doing a, um, I was a speaker for um, a, a very large uh, accountancy network called Probis. They had about 500 accountants at, at their national event, and I was going there to speak. And they held it at the Radisson Edwardian. You know on Heathrow? Nice, really nice hotel. Never been there before. Anyway, so I'm walking up to the, to the reception area, and there's a guy typing on his computer, whatever, and he looks up. I said, are you here to check in, sir? I went, yeah. So can I take your name? Steve Hackney. Mr. Hackney, I believe this is your first time at the Radisson Edwardian. Now, that's impressive, isn't it? Yeah. But how easy is that? Like, yeah. that's an easy system. Like, are they a first-time customer? If they are, let's acknowledge it. Now, that, that, that's impressive. Is, is it a wow? No, probably not a wow, but it's, that's really impressive, that. Yeah, I am. <clears throat> Mr. Hackney. Because this is your first time at the Radisson Edwardian, is it okay if I upgrade you to a suite? Nah, I'm all right. I'll just slum it with everyone else. It's like maybe that was fortuitous. I have been back several times since, and I have been upgraded, but not every time. Anyway, so of course, can I sort your bags out? Yep. Anyway, so I walk into the, I walk into the suite. So I'm walking in like this. And on the left, in the sort of lounge area, was this big round table. And on this big round table was a big white plate, round white plate. And on this big round white plate was a big chunk of chocolate cake. Now, you don't know this, because I haven't even had dessert, but I love chocolate cake. So they didn't know that, but it was a fluke. So literally, nice big piece of chocolate cake. But get this, on the plate, in chocolate sauce, they'd written, welcome, Mr. Hackney. How amazing is that? Then, next to this plate of chocolate, which I forgot to take a picture of, was this book. And this is the BBC Children Need recipe book, and this is my favourite recipe. It's a hundred of the UK's best chefs share their favourite recipes. Out of the top of that was a compliment slip, and it read, Dear Mr Hackney, please accept this gift with our compliments. You'll find our restaurant <coughs> featured on page 67. Just, that's just stunning, that. So they're referencing their restaurant in this book that's the top chefs in the UK 
I'm thinking, their restaurant must be really good. Where am I eating? I mean, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? It's stunning. And then next to that was this sort of greetings card, London depicted greeting cards, and inside was a message from the manager of the hotel, saying, Dear Mr Hackney, um, welcome to the Radisson Edwardian. If you have any questions or, or you need any help, please contact Julia. She is the duty manager. She can be reached on extension 6022, signed by the manager. Probably wasn't signed by the manager, but it, you know, it was signed by the manager. Stunning. Like that, they are wows left, right and centre, aren't they? Now, whenever I go back to London, particularly if it's Heathrow, where do you think I stir? I mean, it's a no-brainer. My wife doesn't even ask me, she just books it. Okay, so even if we're on holiday, she'll book the Radisson Edward, because that's it, we're not, we're not going anywhere else. I must have told this story to tens of thousands of people, probably even more, because I've done it through email as well. So I don't know how much business I've generated for the Radisson Edwardian, but that's what can happen when you get this stuff right. Now, for me, that's because they're systemized. And actually, you go back every time and their service is as good as that. And I don't get an upgrade every time, but I'm not expecting it. Here's a couple more good ones. Okay, so... This is going back to last year. Okay, so I bought a car for my eldest. <laughs> And this is after we bought it, obviously. And this, I got this voicemail. Hi, Mr. Hackney, Simon at um, Diamond and Carlisle. Just following up to make sure everything's okay with the new car. I will drop you an email. Um, I know you're a busy man. Just want to know that everything's all okay. Uh, speak to you soon. Thanks, bye. Not the most articulate blokes in the world, but how nice is that? And look what's next to it. What did he say? I will drop you a line. And guess what he did? Good afternoon, Steve. Just want to check that everything's okay with the new house, blah, blah, blah. Nice. How difficult is that? How difficult is it to ring a customer after they bought something from you and go, I'm just ringing to make sure everything's okay? Car garages, by the way, are really good at this. Yeah, really good at this. And here's another example. So I get my, my car serviced at the Jag garage just actually down the road here. And this is typical. This happens every time. There's this system. Hello, Mr. Hackney. It's Tim from Royal. Just a courtesy call following your visit, your recent visit. Just wanted to check all is okay with the car and to ask if you were satisfied with the service you received from us. And if you do have any comments, please give me a call on 01625 546 208. Thanks ever so much. Bye now. Mm. I mean, it's just so easy though, isn't it? I get a video of my car. Oh yeah, it's brilliant that, isn't it? it this stuff's not difficult. Um, when we had the franchise group, Sai, you'll remember this, we used to bring the clients up to, um, to our head office and um, it was the first thing we'd do with them. So they'd, they'd join us, they'd pay us a lot of money, they'd pay us 36 grand up front for us to franchise their business and we took a share of, of, of what they made from the from the franchise. And they'd come to the office and basically they'd spend a whole day with us, them, them, them and their management team. And they'd basically spend the whole day with, with the various factions of the team. So they, the first thing they'd do is they'd, they'd go and speak to Pete. So Pete would just check their business model. Pete's got an unbelievable brain when it comes to business modeling. They'd, they'd spend about an hour with me and I'd just look at their high level um, sales and marketing systems that their franchisees were going to use and what they would use for their recruitment. They'd then spend the rest of the, well, we'd take them out for lunch and then the afternoon they'd spend with the marketing team. So I had a marketing manager and a team around him that would then put together the sales and marketing elements for the franchisees and actually for recruitment of the franchise. So it was a brilliant day. And everyone thoroughly enjoyed it. So that was a moment of truth in a way. But what we did unbeknown to them was when they drove up, and a lot of them did, or down or whatever, we'd get the car valeted, just the outside of it. And we'd put a nice little note on the front, which was a waterproof note that said, and it was personalised, so dear John, dear Julie, just, just to let you know we've, we've took the time and trouble to valet your car, hope you don't mind, but it says a thank you for taking the time and trouble to come up to the office today. Now we give an amazing day, what do you think they talked about the most? The car valet. The car valet. 
<laughs> 10 quid we paid for that. Do you remember us doing that? 10 quid. Yet everyone thought it was amazing. It's like a wow moment. So look, this stuff is not difficult to do. We all know what good looks like. No, but again, how many times have you had a wow experience? You, there aren't many. They just aren't. <coughs> so moments of truth, look, are, are just amazing ways to help get shitloads more money out of customers just by treating our points of contact with our customers really well. I love them. So literally, as I said before, you can forget about everything else. You only need moments of truth for customer service, for brilliant customer service. That's it. Now, you don't have to read moments of truth now. You've got that concept in your heads. You isolate every point of contact. You make sure it's above the line and throw in as many wows as you can. That's as difficult as it gets. And obviously, systemize it so it's replicable. Now... Carlson uses this for just customers. We've expanded it into prospects as well. And I'm going to talk about that later. <laughs>